for everybody who doesn't know me, my name is Caitlin Ali Pena. I am the Director of Operations and Programs um, with the Center for Election Science. We are a nonpartisan nonprofit that studies and advocates for better voting methods. Um, and right now we are just trying to engage people um, and provide them with ways to stay connected to democracy and um, different, you know, uh, subjects around government and civics while everybody's kind of stuck at home. Um, and we thought that connecting with iCivics to help you all um, access resources while you're at home with your kids or if you're an educator who's trying to figure out how to um, teach online, um, we thought that would be a great opportunity right now to provide those resources to you all. Um, so I, I'm assuming that most of you are at least somewhat familiar with iCivics, but if you're not, um, they are also an, a nonprofit and they um, engage students with civics uh, lessons and discussions um, by providing teachers with the resources they need to create um, interactive lessons. Um, and I think Amber might touch on this, but I'm pretty sure that you guys are kind of moving to provide some resources for parents as well. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but today, I think Amber will be focusing a little bit more on parents. But of course, this should hopefully be helpful for both educators and parents alike. Um, so without further ado, I will introduce our presenter today. Her name is Amber Coleman Mortley, and she is the Director of Social Engagement at iCivics. Uh, before joining iCivics, she was a decorated college athlete, and she worked for about a decade as a PE and health teacher um, and a varsity head coach at Sidwell Friends School. She has a BA in African American Studies from Oberlin College and a Master of Communications from American University in Media Entre Entrepreneurship. And she's also an NBC Parent Toolkit expert, which is really cool. Um, Amber also has her own blog called Mom of All Capes, and she covers parenting strategies in ed tech, civic education, parent teacher partnerships, and social emotional development. Um, so she's obviously got lots of expertise for us. So I will go ahead and hand. Awesome. Yay. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining this evening. Um, and for the people who will be watching the recording later. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I do want to give out a shout out to um, Caitlin for reaching out to us. Uh, thank you so very much for allowing us the space to commune with your community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we do have some iCivics people uh, who are also on the webinar. So please, as we go, um, because I will be focused on my presentation, um, if you have questions as we go along, I will uh, shoot it to, you know, Emma Humphrey, she's in the chat. Um, Kristen Chaprone is in the chat. And I think I see Laura DeSalvo as well. So um, hopefully they can answer your questions as I go along. All right, I guess let's get this party started. I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, hopefully everyone can see as I click present. All right, so um, we are here this evening to discuss um, teaching your kids about democracy with iCivics. And I'm just gonna give a really, you know, hopefully quick overview um, so that we leave enough time for questions. All right, so as I was introduced before, my name is uh, Amber Coleman Mortley. I'm the Director of Social Engagement at iCivics. Um, in my spare time, I'm a parent blogger and I also am at Mom of All Capes um, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Feel free to reach out to me during and after this presentation. I am a mom of three. Um, I have an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, and an 11-year-old. So, you know, iCivics is really a great resource for the, the kids in this age group. And so I'm super excited to talk about um, the ways that you can connect this resource with those ages and other ages as well. And then, yes, I am a former uh, PE teacher and health teacher and varsity coach. Um, so before we get started, all right, um, I just want to touch into, like, what does it mean to teach your kids 
about democracy, all right? So the first thing that it is not, it is not political tribalism. This is not about raising more libertarians or more uh, Democrats, more Republicans, independents, or Green Party voters, all right? Um, what teaching your kids about democracy actually is, is um, getting more engaged citizens, you know, raising independent and empowered thinkers that understand how government operates and functions in their lives. Um, hopefully, when they do that, they do it with zeal and enthusiasm uh, to solve the most pressing matters in their communities. So the reason you want to dive into democracy, even at home with your kids, is so that you're giving them the skills so that later on, um, they are ready to be um, empowered and engaged citizens later on in life. So today's agenda, all right, um, we're going to cover, obviously, I'll give a brief introduction about iCivics. Um, we're going to talk about responding to school closures and remote learning. We're going to talk about um, the other resources that are available for parents and how you guys can use those grade level. Um, and then we'll talk about what to look for um, at iCivics in an election year. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. All right, so about iCivics, just really quickly, we are an online digital resource. Um, we have 20 games. We have over 200 lesson plans. Um, we do have ELL resources. So if you have questions about English language learners, Kristen can answer those questions in the chat for you. Um, we do have resources in Spanish as well. Um, we do have digital literacy tools. Um, and then there are also projects that you can do with iCivics. Um, we have over 200,000 res registered teachers. Um, and have been used by over 6 million students um, last year. So we've been around for 10 years. Justice O'Connor is our founder. Um, so, you know, we're get, we're, we've reached our stride with educators and we are hoping that we can, um, you know, connect with parents more as well. That's why we're here today. Um, so when you get started with iCivics, um, I would love for each and every one of you, um, if you're not an educator, to create a free parent account. And so you're going to go to icivics.org backslash login. Um, once you've logged in, I will be totally honest, there is so much on iCivics. Um, and it is a rich, uh, resource rich tool. Um, so we recommend that you start with the games, especially for parents to start with our games. Um, now your, your child can uh, play the iCivics games without logging in and creating an account. Um, our resources are free, uh, but if you want to use some of the other resources, you're going to have to create an account. Um, we are working on building out more resources specifically for parents, um, so that's why we really want you guys to go to the games. And then also know that our games are tablet compatible. Uh, they're not compatible on smartphones, uh, unfortunately, but you can find us in the iTunes and Google Play stores. All right, so. We're going to talk about responding to remote learning and school closures. Uh, so in the chat, um, you know, just let's drop some answers in because I love engagement. So uh, hopefully this isn't just static, but, you know, kind of share with the rest of the group. Um, go into the chat and just kind of answer this question. What are you feeling during this unprecedented moment? And I'll just, you know, let a couple of seconds go by. Please use the chat. You know, are you feeling overwhelmed, moderately stressed, a little stressed? Are you cool as a cucumber? Um, does it vary upon day to day? You know, I'll be totally honest with each and every one of you. Some days I really feel like I'm killing it. And then some days I am literally crying. So I think, um, you know, just kind of keeping it in perspective is great. Um, there is a range of emotions that you're going to feel during this time. Um, and thank you guys for responding in the chat. Really appreciate it. Um, this moment can dredge up a variety of emotions, right? But I want to share with each and every one of you that the most important thing uh, that we can do as parents is kind of take a deep breath and step back and also ask for help, right? So if you're ever on the iCivic site and you're like uh, completely stuck or you're like, she said this resource, I don't know where it is, you know, feel free to tweet me on Twitter or DM me on Twitter. Um, feel free to reach out to iCivics uh, on Twitter um, or email us um, at support at iCivics.org. We are happy to help you to make sure that you have what you need because it's tough. We're being asked to do a lot right now. So because we're asked to do a lot right now, um, we have put together a landing page to kind of assist parents and educators with 
some first start resources um, uh, to help with enrichment uh, while students and kids are at home. So again, we suggest starting with our games, right? Um, they're educational, they're fun, they're engaging, uh, they provide structure in a home schooling setting. Um, and then also the games take about 30 to 45 minutes to play. Uh, so if you're trying to get through a meeting and like I know today, like my daughter was trying to interrupt the staff call, you know, I put them on iCivics and I was like, hey, y'all play iCivics for this next 30 to 45 minutes. They did it. It was great. After the staff call, we checked in about what they've learned. The one thing I want to say about iCivics games, um, you don't really want to focus on like winning, 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 right? Anytime you play an iCivics game, you win. Um, of course, we do ha have points, but the most important part of this is having fun and then learning as you go. So just want to keep that um, in front of mind. Uh, you can find new and existing resources at icivics.org backslash toolkit. Um, and I do want to say that after this webinar, I'll be tweeting out all of the links at Mama Ball Cates. Uh, so please check those out. So if you miss anything, they will be there. Um, but go to icivics.org backslash toolkit, and that is where we've curated, you know, these are the things that you could use to get started. Um, you can also reach out again to the iCivics curriculum team after, after this webinar with questions at support at iCivics.org. We are here for you, all right? We are totally all in your corner. So I'm going to cover some more resources for teaching about uh, democracy at home. So, you know, um, these are a couple ways that you can use our games. So iCivics covers a variety of important topics. These topics are local government, the elections, uh, the constitution, citizenship. Uh, we do cover landmark Supreme Court cases, um, how to run for president. So there are a lot of civic topics that are covered on our site. Um, our games cover a lot of these topics as well. Um, again, they're great starting places uh, to, to get started. So here are a few strategies that I have uh, for you to go deeper with our games. Uh, one is a family leaderboard, right? So, you know, mom or dad or grandma or parent guardian uh, play the game, right? You post your score up on the family whiteboard or just, you know, say, hey guys, this was my score. And then you challenge your kids to beat your score on the game. Again, like you learn something, they learn something, you know, who doesn't want to try and beat their parent at a game? Um, and it's just a really fun and engaging way to get the, the whole family involved around civic, a certain civic topic. Um, the other way that I love to use iCivic games is sibling play. So I will pair um, my sixth grader with my third grader or my fifth and sixth grader together or my fifth and third grader together um, and say, all right, you guys play together. Uh, we often ask teachers to execute this strategy. Um, it includes, um, it encourages conversation between kids. Um, it gets them thinking and working together. Um, you know, it might be a great exercise in having siblings who do not get along to get along for 30 or 45 minutes. Um, it also will give you a break because you're putting more than one child into an activity uh, together, right? Um, and then it's also great leadership for your older child and your younger child to engage with each other and have these kinds of discussions um, and making choices during the game. Uh, another way you can play is uh, game play with post game questions. Um, so we do have some post game discussion questions for parents. I can tweet those out for you guys. Um, we, you know, encourage you to play the game and then kind of think critically, like, what are some of the things that you learned um, when you played the game? Like, what was, what was this, how did this amendment uh, stick out for you? What was something um, when you ran your own county and county's work that you really focused and zeroed in on? All right, so you kind of want to talk to your kids about, like, you know, what was the experience like? Um, our games are simulations that put kids in the driver's seat, kids and adults, actually. Um, you know, most of us aren't going to run for president, but you can run for president when you play uh, win the White House. You know, so that gives you a kind of an idea of like what it's like. Um, so there's that. Um, also, gameplay and family discussion. So it's kind of like the post game questions. You're going to want to talk about like, you know, um, just a wide variety of civic topics are happening all around us. Local government is happening right now all around us. Um, you know, so bring up discussions about what you guys are seeing in the news and see if you can relate it to the gameplay. 
again, I highly encourage parents to play these games as well. Um, but of course, you can just let your kids play. And then also we have bingo, a bingo card. Uh, you'll find that at icivics.org backslash bingo. Um, students will play the game and then you're going to challenge them, give your, your kid, print it out, give your kid the bingo card, and then let them go, you know, on the iCivic site. Um, and there are a variety of different challenges on that bingo card um, that will get your kid uh, hopefully just channeled in for hours at a time. So those are a few strategies that I've used um, to help my kids, you know, kind of play with democracy uh, at, in our home using iCivics games, and they've proved them to be pretty fun and engaging activities for us. So we're going to talk about um, grade levels because I get a lot of questions um, from other parents that I know, okay, well, my kid's in second grade or third grade, like what can I do uh, on your site, right? Um, so, you know, iCivics has been used as low as third grade um, all the way up through community college um, and even undergrad. Right. Um, our games are super fun and engaging. Um, they are read heavy. So that's why I say third grade. Um, if you have a super second grade level, you know, second grade reader who is on a higher level, um, they can also play the games. Uh, we do have voiceover in some of our games. And again, there are ELL supports uh, for ELLs and struggling readers um, that are great as well. Um, so the games that I recommend for our um, elementary third through fifth. Um, these are, we have a coloring book, the My County's Work coloring book. We have Do I Have a Right, where you can run a constitutional law firm in English or Spanish. Uh, we have County's Work, where you run your own county. Uh, next month, aka tomorrow, is National County Government, Government Month. So it's a great opportunity for you to kind of dive into local politics around you. Um, also, Immigration Nation, so you can learn the path to citizenship. That game is available in English and Spanish as well. Um, and so to help you guys out, we have the photos here. Uh, when you go on the iCivic site, uh, this is where you can find them, uh, or this is what they look like. Um, and again, we do have uh, them available on the iTunes and Google Play Store. Uh, games for elementary, uh, I highly recommend siblings playing together. Um, this, again, you know, takes the reading part off of one child uh, completely by themselves. Our games just work better with conversation. Um, you know, we do like to, it, games just give you a lot about the critical thinking process, um, but it's really great to partner your kids up if you can. Um, also, using our bingo card with the elementary students. That's just another great way uh, to get them to kind of like try and like, you know, get five in a row before the end of the week. All right, so uh, here are the best games and resources for middle school kids, sixth grade through eighth grade. Um, and again, like our resources are essentially crafted for middle school. We do also have high school resources as well. Um, but we, when we first started our organization, we really focused on the middle school level uh, because that's where civics is generally taught. So we have a, every single one of our games can be used for middle school, but I think that these are the best, at least this is what I hear, and this is also what my children tell me. Um, do I have a right? Again, counties work, immigration nation. Then you have executive command where you can be the president and run the whole office. Um, you have branches of power where you're balancing all three branches of government. And then you have new speed defenders where you're fighting deceptive ads and uh, viral deception uh, in the news. So that touches on media literacy skills. And so again, here are all the photos of the game games. Um, you know, with middle school, you want to use our game guides and have family discussions. Um, you also want to use that bingo card. Um, maybe you you'll want to like challenge your kid. You know, and say you know, hey, I I got the score. Can you beat my score? You know, middle school is a great time where you can you know try and get more parents child engagement because I know for sure it's tough. They want to be on their phone. They want to be on TikTok, might not want to talk to you. Um, so I found that with my sixth grader, getting her to engage with me at these games has been um, pretty beneficial. So um, best games and resources for high school. Um, you can, again, just like middle school, use the game guides, have family discussions, um, think about that bingo card. I also want to encourage you to think about, you know, ninth through 12th grade, you're getting ready to release a voter into the world, 
right? So, you know, really think about like, how can we have this uh, individual start to formulate their own ideas about uh, their role as an active and engaged citizen? Um, so uh, great to have those discussions in the house. I also uh, listed a few games here. I've added Race to Ratify uh, for high school. Um, that is a game where you work to ratify the Constitution. You can be a Federalist or an Anti-Federalist. Um, it's really cool. Um, also, we have Study Edge for the AP exam. Um, this, we have over 100 videos and study guides um, here available to help your um, student who's studying for the AP test. Um, so please take advantage of that. Again, I'll be tweeting out all these links and all of this information after this webinar. Um, but if you want to get free access to that um, through the end of this school year, please email icivics at studyedge.com. Um, and so I will show you guys the photo. So this is, you know, what I'm thinking of are the best resources for our high school kids. Again, um, you're thinking like I'm about to release a voter into the world. So how can I begin to get my kid to pay attention to the news, but then also not just absorb the news as you know truth? How do I uh, formulate my own opinions um, and thoughts about civics and uh, politics and how that uh, relates to me? All right. So speaking of uh, releasing voters into the world, this is an election year. Um, so are you ready? <laughs> I live in the DMV, so we are always ready. Every year is an election year for us. We're always thinking about politics and government here, um, for better or for worse. So more engagement in the chat, please. Um, do you feel confident talking about the election with your kids? You know, so there's a variety of answers. You don't have to necessarily say A, B, C, D, or E. You can pick your own, um, you know, but the, you know, I've got this, no worries, you know, I can hold my own, um, I can get it, but not with confidence, not so much, and no way. Um, please share your uh, confidence level about talking about the election uh, with your kids in the chat. All right. So um, one thing I will say, you know, we don't want to shy away from the election. Um, you know, the last election was a bit contentious. Um, it was frustrating for some, awesome for others. You know, there's a range of emotions connected to the election uh, and the results, but we don't want to shy away from it, right? Um, now is the perfect time to have these discussions, especially with the November, it's gonna be a super, um, you know, excited time. Um, so, you know, use this time where you're home with your kid to begin to have those discussions about like, what does it mean to be an informed voter? Um, you know, why do I vote this way? But you know, I respect if you don't, wouldn't vote this way, right? Um, again, when you're talking about voting and talking about elections, you want to make sure that you allow your child to have the space to formulate their own opinions and their own ideas and have discussions with you. Again, you're not alone, right? Like if you're like, oh, the election, um, there are a lot of parents and even educators who are 100% confident about engaging with the election. Um, and that's where we come in, right? There's a lot of like, maybe I don't want to give my kid my ideas about things, or I don't want to be, and I don't want to be too biased, right? How do I, how do I work around that? All right. The first thing is you can do this, all right? Um, our games introduce your kids to the election in a fun and engaging way, right? Um, we have two games that are election focused. Um, we have cast your vote, right? Where you can prepare yourself to vote with uh, great information and make great choices uh, based on candidates' platforms. Um, we have Win the White House where you're running your own presidential campaign. So you're learning about what is polling and all these other great things that go into um, an, a, a great campaign, all right? So, you know, play the games as a family, once again, then discuss the election process, the candidates, the issues, and then there's so much more that you guys can bring up um, after playing these games. I think uh, with the Electoral College, especially um, trying to understand Electoral College versus popular vote, uh, when the White House is really amazing at giving you a hands-on experience about how all of that works. So right into when the White House. Um, so when the White House, what is it? Um, you're going to learn about uh, the issues related to the 2020 election. So we've kind of freshened up the game to make sure that it aligns with what is happening uh, or what will be happening in the parties now. Um, yes, it only covers Democrats and Republicans. I'm sorry, we do not have like, um, you know, the green 
Party or, or the Libertarian Party. You know, we just do those two. Um, players will learn how to create a slogan and they'll, you know, engage with the public in this game. They also will have to secure funding and do some fundraising. Um, they, you know, manipulate ads and work with the media. They poll the different states. Um, and then again, you're trying to get those 270 votes. Once you've gotten those 270 votes, you've won the White House. So that's essentially your goal in this game. Yes, you can turn a state like Texas, who's generally red, blue in this game. We want to give you space to kind of like figure out how to manipulate the map a little bit um, and, you know, and have fun with that. Um, okay, so you're going to learn how difficult it is to actually win an election. Um, you're going to learn about campaign strategy. And then you're going to learn about also how long and expensive the campaign process is. So this game is about 40 minutes or so, uh, depending on how quickly you move through it. Um, but it is one of our most fun games. People love this game. Adults love this game. Uh, so I really encourage you guys as a family to use this one um, for one of your challenges. All right, so we're going to move into Cast Your Vote. So uh, Cast Your Vote just recently got a facelift. Um, so we revamped the game a little bit. We added some more stuff to it. Um, in Cast Your Vote, you're going to learn about issues related to informed voting practices. So um, players will evaluate candidates based on their qualifications, right? Um, evaluate candidates, candidates on their experience and their voting record, right? Uh, all the things that we as adults want to make sure that we're doing as informed voters, highly encourage adults to play as well. Um, you're gonna compare different perspectives and issues and then uh, align them with your own personal views and issues in the game. Um, there, you're also gonna touch on like, you know, town hall debates, local elections, and obviously issue voting and candidate platform. So really recommend um, this game. It's a really great uh, way to teach you about like, what am I looking for if I wanna be an informed voter? What are the things that I need to pay attention to uh, when I'm looking at um, a different candidate? Um, and, and how do I make those choices, you know, weigh those choices when they come? All right, so uh, we have an election headquarters. Um, in a, you know, we have, it's a presidential election year. A lot of people are paying attention to it. Um, there are a lot of great learning opportunities that align with election years. Um, you know, this election headquarters is very teacher facing, but the parents can also find a lot of interesting stuff here uh, that I highly recommend. I recommend looking at the infographics that are on this page. So it's icivics.org backslash election. Um, you know, look at the infographics on this page. Uh, our infographics are pretty infamous and amazing. Um, they give a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Uh, infographics are um, really awesome teaching resource uh, to use at home. You can print them out and put them up on your wall if you want. Um, have your kid read them and maybe, you know, write a little bit about what they've learned from the infographic. Um, so I definitely recommend you use those infographics on that site. Um, also, you know, our educator network members, these are our teachers who, you know, really love iCivics and they want to have a deeper relationship with us. Uh, they're on almost all 50 states. They do a lot of writing for us um, and a lot of other awesome things. So definitely check out the blog post that they've written. Um, and then there's an other, a lot of other activities. And we, as November approaches, we'll be adding more and more and more to that site. So definitely keep your eyes out there. Um, okay, so I have a little bit of homework for each and every one of you. Um, one would be to create a free parent account, right? If you're not a teacher, right, um, and you're just, I'm just a parent, definitely create a free parent account um, at icivics.org backslash login. Um, other homework I have for you, connect. Like, let's be besties, right? Connect with us at icivics.org. You can connect with me at Mama Ball Cates on Twitter. Um, email us at support if you get stuck or have questions or, you know, if I went too fast and, you know, you're like, ah, where is that? Um, definitely email us at, at support at icivics.org. Um, you know, start a family leaderboard and then share it with me. I really would love to see, um, you know, the different ways that parents kind of engage and challenge their kids. And, you know, it doesn't mean that everyone plays on the same day at the same time, right? You could just say, our family leaderboard is for this week. This week, we're going to play win the White House. 
All right. You know, Johnny plays on Monday and Peter plays on Tuesday. And by Friday, you know, mom and dad have played and like, we'll see who wins, you know, maybe put some stakes on it. All right. Um, but please share your leaderboard with me. I would love to see it. Uh, you can tweet it to me at a t on Twitter. Um, and then visit our remote learning toolkit. So that's the place where we've collected, you know, resources to help with the learning that's happening at home. iCivics resources can be used supplementally. So if you have, like, you are your teachers have already assigned your kids stuff, and let's say they just, my kids just breeze through everything really quickly, and they're like, what else can I do? Um, I'm like, all right, you're going on iCivics. So I definitely recommend um, going to that toolkit, bookmark this toolkit, um, and start with the games that we recommend there. Uh, there are also blog posts on that uh, page, um, and there's just a variety of other resources and tools as well. And then explore when the White House and cast your vote. Um, those are two great places to start up the conversation about the election. But most importantly, I hope that you guys take care of yourself because uh, in this, this is a super stressful time and uh, a lot is being asked of us. And, you know, we just want to make this as easy as possible. You're doing a great job. You're here this evening, you know, looking for more resources to engage and empower your kids. So that is awesome. Um, I really would encourage you to, if you have a, a, a work call or you need to just pick a break from your kids, because I get it, put them on iCivics for 30 to 45 minutes um, and let them play and learn and, um, you know, have a good time. So with that, um, I would like to open it up with questions because I didn't want to talk the whole time. All right, let me exit and stop sharing. Are there any questions that haven't been answered yet? Hey, Amber, thank you so much for this. This is great. Um, one question I have is how do you create the family leaderboard? Okay, so, uh, well, so the way that we do it, we just use our whiteboard. We don't use like iCivics for, um, for that. Uh, you could create like in iCivics, you can create your parent account and then create accounts for your child. Um, and then that way you see their score and you see how long they've played. Um, I think we should, we could do another webinar on that maybe. Um, but I would definitely recommend just somewhere in the house, just like kind of like put up a piece of paper or if you have a whiteboard where the activities are, um, just kind of write up the game, write up the, you know, when it's, when is the last day that people can get their scores in, you know, and then have people just record that way. That would be the easiest way. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for your, thanks for your question. More questions? All right, I see Anna in the chat. She says, how can I relate to a teenager, 13 year old? How important it is to learn this? Ah, okay. Yeah, 13 is tough, um, Anna. Like, <laughs> I used to coach and teach 13 year olds and they are a pretty fickle bunch. Um, you know, first thing is just kind of building rapport and just having like, very basic conversations like, you know, I run my house like a semi-democracy, right? So my home is already a democracy. And so for my kids, I tell them like, hey, like you guys get to vote on dinner, right? Like, you know, I don't run this like a dictatorship. You guys get to vote on dinner the same way you guys get to vote on dinner. Like I get to vote on whether we get speed bumps on the street, right? Or whether this council person has done a great job and they should come back next year, right? Um, you know, as you ride around town with your 13 year old, right, point out the different places in which civics is happening, like, you know, the stop sign that's there, that is civics, right, that someone said that that was important to put there, um, you know, the reason that our lives operate the way they do is because we are either super engaged or we're not engaged at all, right, and we have the power to change that. Um, and I would definitely just try to continue to relate, like, if you want things to go better around you, you have to be paying attention, you have to be informed about it, and you have to want to uh, engage with that process. I hope that that answered your question. Um, okay, so, um, oh, thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Emma. <laughs> um, any other questions? 
Any other questions? Please ask, you can ask anything. All right, I guess I killed it. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah, you, you answered everything with your presentation. Awesome. So no need for follow-ups. Oh, fantastic. Um, somebody did ask, they say they were late and can they get resources or the presentation? Um, yeah, Marjorie, we will be sending out an email um, with the recording of the conversation and iCivics has a bunch of resources that they're gonna include in that email as well. So we'll follow up with that tomorrow. And um, I will also tweet out at Mama Law Tapes um, some of the links as well, so that if you're looking awesome. for them, just I'll be on Twitter and um, you know putting them out like rapidly. So if you missed any there, um, and then you know I can I'll follow up with you later. Okay. Awesome. Well, if there's no other questions, um, I want to thank you, Amber, and the rest of the team at iCivics. This was great. I think that um, people got a lot of really important information and resources, um, and hopefully they, these are some fun ways that they can keep their kids occupied right now, because I know that times are tough, and it's hard to keep kids occupied when they're stuck inside 24-7. So um, I think these will be really fun learning opportunities for them. So thank you to everybody who participated and thank you to Amber and the iCivics team. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Center for Election Science. We really, really appreciate you. Caitlin, thank you. Everyone, thank you for taking the time. Thank you viewers later on the, on the recording. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks guys. We'll talk to you later.